<laughs> it's out of drink, bitch. That was really pandering to the Rick and Morty fan base. It was a cheap shot. I also loaded myself up there and thought I could burp on command, but it failed. <coughs> eh. Turns out I love Rick and Morty. It's a freaking amazing show. It's actually like legit good sci-fi. Uh, and good sci-fi is really rare. It's, it's about ideas and taking those ideas to their logical conclusion and not being afraid of where it takes you. Um, it's actually something I really strongly disagree with George Double R. Martin about. He calls it his furniture theory. He says that all genre is the same, that sci-fi, horror, and fantasy are the same genre. You just change around the furniture. You, you switch a summoning circle for a teleportation device and a, a magic wand for a phaser, and you've turned from sci-fi to fantasy. I fundamentally disagree with that. I think that... This would be like the one version we keep all my burps in, the one episode. I think that fundamentally... Um, that uh, uh, sci-fi should be about uh, the ideas behind it. And I think that Rick and Morty explores those ideas and is unafraid of those ideas and those implications in a way that very few sci-fi is. So, uh, amazing work. Because honestly, I'm gonna, I might, this may not make the edit, but truth be told, I was a little bit gun shy about doing a Rick and Morty drink. Um, and why? Well, because Rick is an alcoholic and has a serious problem. And the show is largely about that. Pickle Rick, that episode is entirely about Rick being Pickled, that's the thing. He's a drunk um, and his alcoholism is really damaging to the, his relationship with the people around him and everything. Um, and I don't know that I wanna do a drink about a, that or, and celebrate that. But I thought about it and I was like, well, that's, that's Rick and we're not Rick and I'm not Rick and you're not Rick and we're not celebrating that. And you would be a fool to celebrate that aspect of Rick. What Rick is great for is the fact that he's unafraid uh, what Rick, Rick is terrible for is the fact that he's unconcerned. Those are two competing, uh, maybe even harmonious in his personality aspects, but one is positive and one is negative. Negative. Rick and Morty! You and me, Rick and Morty, we're gonna do 18 seasons! We're gonna go forever! Our adventures, they're never gonna stop! Morty, it's gonna be Rick and Morty! Morty and Rick, all the time! Every day, we're gonna do adventures, and we're gonna go on more adventures, Morty! We're gonna go on them all! We're gonna go on a lot of adventures! We're gonna need to get some more of those mega seeds! Uh, I thought about doing a thing with Tonka Bean, which is a forbidden fruit around here. And if I ever do another Rick and Morty drink, maybe we'll look at Tonka Bean as a stand-in for Mega Seeds, Arcturan Mega Seeds, which we can't get. Is it Arcturan? Whatever, Mega Seeds. Now I'm thinking of Arcturan Mega Gin from Pan Galactic Garter Blaster. Um, no, the Mega Seeds that he needed in episode, the pilot, great, unbelievable episode. My God, it's insane. It just throws you right in. There's no first act at all, <laughs> you know? You don't have to worry about how this all began. It's just always been going on and welcome aboard. I love that kind of a start. How are we gonna do this drink? Because Rick always, of course, oh, Rick always has his flask. Um, it's my first time wearing a lab coat. I haven't found the pockets yet. We don't know what's in the flask. I think in one episode, if I'm not mistaken, in season one, he makes a reference to there being scotch in it. And then the other time we see him order something specific is at Bird Person's wedding. Excuse me, bartender. Can you make me a dumb grandson pep talk? It's one part lame advice about stuff you know nothing about and a lot of vodka. Mm hmm I have a lot of vodka. Then I'll take one of those. I don't need the rest. God, whatever, Rick. So we're, we're going off script. We're gonna make a drink I call Rick's Flask. Now, in an interview, if I'm not mistaken, Dan Harmon said that although they're not really ready to talk about what's in the flask, a lot of people speculate that it might be mega seed extract or something, which would be weird. I don't favor that because it implies that Rick's super intelligence comes from the mega seeds and that he's not really super intelligent and it changes his whole character from having a serious drinking problem to having, I don't like it, it's a problem for me. I think I said in another interview that Dan Harmon said that I think that Rick is a connoisseur of fine spirits and that he rotates what's in the flask on a regular basis, um, and, but it's always something good. Um, and that in the pilot, it was Hennessy XO, or as Dan Harmon said it, Henny XO, bitch! Um, so I've got a bottle of Hennessy XO right here. Um, I went to buy a bottle of this, and I found out it is way more expensive than I wanted it to be. And uh, happily, Stefano, who's sitting behind the camera, had a bottle, and he was willing to share a few ounces with me for this episode. So um, 
that's where this is coming from. Uh, some of you are recoiling in fear that I'm about to make a cocktail. I think it goes for like 150 or $160 a bottle. It's insane. That's how I roll. I'm unafraid. You know, this is Rick's drink. So we're going to make a drink I call Rick's Flask. Uh, this is a stirred drink. It's kind of in the vein of an old fashioned. Um, so we're going to start by adding our ingredients to my stirring glass and then I'm going to crack some ice in it and stir it up. I'm starting with two bar spoons of my Demerara simple syrup. Uh, and the next ingredient is pickle juice. Uh, why did that go in the drink? Um, well, because of Pickle Rick. And I'm using Grillo's pickles, which was the good pickles that were available at the grocery store I went to. But I mean, in a really happy twist of fate, their mascot's like a little pickle person. Isn't that great? So if you were gonna say that the perfect Pickle Rick pickles, it's Grillo's pickles. There he is. Uh, so I want pickle brine. My recipe calls for three bar spoons of pickle brine. I'm literally just gonna scoop right off the top of here. That's crazy, right? We're adding pickle brine to this cocktail. In practice though, there definitely are drinks that call for things like olive juice and pickle brine. So it's not crazy that that would be a, an ingredient or that it would work. And now much to, uh, man, even the cork. Let's get into this in cork review. First off, Hennessy, this very heavy weight on the top of the cork. I don't know if it's necessary. It does make it feel expensive, but it does also make the cork somewhat unwieldy. So I understand the intent. I don't know, I'm, I'm undecided on that. The cork is a little, um, this, this cork displeases me. This is, I'm, uh, on all fronts, I'm giving this cork only one star on the cork review. Um, if, but you know, if, if you wanna do like some sponsored content, we could, we could bump those numbers up for you. Uh, we're gonna put in two ounces of Hennessy XO, just like Rick! Mmm. Oh my God, it does smell like liquid f***ing magic in there. I've never, I haven't had too much of this stuff, so let's, one second. That's nice. That's a great evolution. Um, you really get that. God, cognac always just tastes like raisins to me, which is such a terrible thing to say. Uh, but you get like a very nice sweetness in that with um, the oak, the tannins, the, the sophistication that comes from that. Very well balanced. That is delightful. Okay, so that's really the whole drink at this point. I'm ready to put the ice in that and shake and stir it. Sometimes I like to come over here and put it on the light because it looks cool. Mmm. So we're gonna pour this into this very dainty looking coop. I'm playing on Dan Harmon's commentary that Rick is a connoisseur and likes the finer things despite his gruff demeanor. I'm gonna garnish that with an orange twist. I'm doing something for presentation's sake I don't normally do. I am pulling the widest, thickest orange twist I possibly can right now. I'm gonna take my knife, I'm gonna trim the edges of this. This is certainly above and beyond, you don't need to do this, but. So now we've got our orange twist on our tiny little tasting coop with our expression of oil. Let's give a taste. That is wonderful. It's such a weird drink, I love it so much because uh, the orange and the pickle brine actually co-mingle. The oil from the orange and the pickle brine, you get that right up front and that readies your palate as it is overtaken by the sweet, oaky, raisiny wonder of that Henny XO, which I'm still enjoying. And the pickle goes away completely, it's overridden until, and as I'm talking and breathing and moving air around inside of my mouth, all of this is evolving. I mean like 45 seconds into the evolution, just the faintest, the faintest bit of that pickly, salty brine comes back and it comes right alongside the flavor profile of that, that cognac. And they coexist for this moment that is, I don't, it's crazy, you know, you, you, you mess around, it's, it's like nothing I've ever had. And it's just, it's crazy to me because you just mess around based on an idea and say, let's put that in the glass and how will that work? 
and then I'll try to adjust from there. And you stumble into an idea that I think is really cool. I mean, that is so different. And I'm now I'm getting like an orange note on that last swallow that it was like much more pure orange than I've gotten before. I'll go in for another sip. That's freaking great, man. Yeah, that pickly thing right up front, a little bit weird. A little bit weird, and it sets you up, and it deceives you, and then it changes. That's fun. And then, oh, that is so different. I'm so pleased with this drink, I really am. I know it's insane and to, to, to use XO, and in truth, it's totally unnecessary. I needed to use the XO because Dan Harmon said he was drinking XO. I would never do it normally. So don't think that you need that, but I mean, hey, if you're crazy and you wanna go that way, go for it. Man, that's freaking such a wild drink. I used three bar spoons of pickle brine. Um, all brines from all pickles are gonna be a little bit different and every cognac's a little bit different. So you might wanna dial that up or down. I mean, a little bit less pickle brine might not be the worst thing here, but it's certainly not too much. It's not the wrong amount either. I think that could be up to taste, but the goal is it does kind of get to this like umami place that is um, uh, 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 so unique, I think, in um, so unique to qualify unique that I think is, uh, this is a linguistic tick, it's not right. You shouldn't talk like that, you shouldn't say those things. You shouldn't say so unique, you know. He's very unique, well you can't be very unique, you either are or you aren't. It's just so um, enigmatic, let's say that, in drinks and food and everything like that, it's so desirable. That's so cool, man, it's like nothing else. And, and so pickle juice in a drink, right? That's crazy, that's crazy. But it's not that crazy when you think about it because a lot of cocktails call for salted rims or saline solution. This is a 20% saline solution, which is salt and water. 20% by weight, it's salt to water. Um, fun story, this actually grows salt crystals around the lip if I don't clean it on a regular basis. So the idea of enhancing flavors with a salt in a cocktail isn't crazy at all. Um, and in cooking, it's like vital. There's a whole salt, acid, fat thing that is the three components of all good cooking, or so they say. It's not nuts at all to put salt into a drink, and if your salt comes in the form of pickle brine, well, so be it. Uh, and if you really wanted to uh, go the full total Rick all, still the same drink though, it's fantastic. Wish I had Eric Beck's uh, portal gun. I don't got a portal gun for this episode, sorry. I'm like one of those Ricks that they took the portal gun away from. Not C-137, Rick. He's a dangerous motherfucker. <sighs> Which Rick would I be? Would I be Simple Rick? It might be Simple Rick. I don't know that the portal life is for me. All that detachment, all of that death. So much death in Rick and Morty. I mean, he's constantly having his grandsons and granddaughters get killed or Cronenberged. I don't know that uh, I could be Rick. You know, I like my family. I think he does too. I think that there's something, he's a broken fella, that Rick. There's something about him, you know? He's tough to peg down. Hmm. God damn, this drink just gets better and better. It just keeps getting, oh, so good. Some mega seeds would be great in it. Oh, I didn't even get into Wubba Lubba Dub Dub. Wubba Lubba Dub Dub! <laughs> Wubba Lubba Dub Dub! That would have been a name for this drink. Wubba Lubba Dub Dub! That's my new catchphrase. He's got a lot of catchphrases. 